Hello and welcome once more to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself, I'm Marta. If you're new here to the channel, and there's quite a few new subscribers over the last few days, and welcome, welcome if you are new. Um, my name is Amata, as I've already said, both myself and Paul do upload content onto the channel. So, as always, I'm here with the latest news from the tech world as of the last 24 or so hours, which is, of course, the 25th of March today, and we're going to begin things with Computex. Now, none of what I'm about to say should come as a surprise to anybody ever, given that, well, everything that's going on right now, but Computex 2020 has been postponed due to the, well, <laughs> issues that are going on right now, or the human malware, as some people have taken to calling it on YouTube, because we literally cannot say the word without it being demonetized, that being the video, of course. However, there is good news. We do have a date for when it's going to be happening, it's been postponed, not cancelled. It is now going to be happening on September the 28th and will be ending on the 30th. Now this is a much shorter time frame and is also going to be a smaller boost space. So we're undoubtedly not going to be seeing everyone, all the companies that we would have seen there, all the long talks that we would have seen, etc, etc. I mean, a lot of these corporations have a pretty strict timeline as to when they want to announce stuff. And, you know, they have everything in line to happen in a certain order, like Computex, and then this happens, and then the launch happens, and everything after that. So, I, I'm kind of expecting to see the announcements that we would have got of Computex, the information that we would have got uh, there, as videos, blog posts, maybe even just live streams that companies conduct themselves. And we may see more information, or just perhaps the same information, but perhaps in more detail, um, at Computex in September. That's pure speculation. They could very well just hold off until September. But given that, you know, they could be talking about a product that's going to be out in, you know, November or even in September itself, that obviously isn't going to be the case for some companies. Still, not surprising, but at least it's been postponed, not cancelled. We're going to move over now, however, to some news from Intel's Tiger Lake. Now this actually came out yesterday, but obviously there wasn't a video yesterday just due to a project that Paul is working on, and oh by the way, he he is still working on it, it was due to come out today, but it just didn't happen, you know, it was more work than anticipated, things just took a bit longer than he thought, fingers crossed it'll be out tomorrow. Anywho, so, we have a Firestrike benchmark that has been posted thanks to Rogame on Twitter, and that's a name you should be very familiar with by this point if you are a long-term viewer of this channel. He's a very known, well, well-known leaker, should I say, sorry, if you aren't familiar with us. However, what did he have to say? Well, he has shown a benchmark which shows the Ryzen 9 4900HS versus Intel's Tiger Lake U 4-core 8-thread 2.7 GHz car, um, chip, should I say. So before I get into the actual results that we see, it's very important to highlight the specs of each uh, chip. So for the Ryzen part, we do see 8 cores, 16 threads, 3 GHz base with that 4.4 GHz boost, DDR4 RAM, 3200 MHz and a 35 watt TDP, versus the Tiger Leg U, which is 4 cores, 8 threads, 2.7 GHz base, LP DDR4X and a 28 watt TDP. With that out of the way, let's talk score, shall we? So. The overall 3D Mark score is in favour of the Ryzen part, as you can see on screen. We do see a score of 3691 versus 3157. However, the graphics score is on Intel's side here, 4514 to 4084. However, for the physics score and combined score, we do see Ryzen come out ahead again. It's very back and forth down the stack. However, for the physics, we see a score of 21289 versus 13030. So. Uh, Intel pretty much got bodied there. As for the combined score, we see 1247 for AMD and 719 for Intel. Once again, uh, Tiger Lake does come out on top on the graphics tests 1 and 2. We see 21 FPS and 18 FPS versus 19 and 16. However, AMD come out ahead in the physics and combined test with a score, with an FPS, sorry, should I say, of 67.58 versus 41.37, and then a combined of 5.80 versus 3.34. So, overall, they both look impressive, to be honest. Ryzen obviously looks very, very impressive, but so does Tiger Lake, to be honest. And there was no turbo enabled on Tiger Lake either, which is definitely something worth keeping in mind. So, with that in mind, let's move over to our next topic, which is less positive, unfortunately, and a lot less positive, and it's regarding AMD and some theft of graphics IP. So, this apparently happened in December of last year, but they are now just disclosing it. 
So they basically said that in December of 2019, it was contacted by someone who was in possession of test files related to the development of future graphics products. Now, some of these were posted online, uh, apparently to GitHub from what I've been hearing. However, they were later taken down. Now, this person had additional files that were never posted online, so they probably still have those files. Um, however, AMD has said that this breach will not um, affect their security or competitiveness of their upcoming graphics processors. And unsurprisingly, they are working with police as part of the investigation. However, don't take my word for it. I'm going to read their statement verbatim. It goes as follows, quote, At AMD, data security and the protection of intellectual property are a priority. In December 29, 2019, we were contacted by someone who claimed to have test files related to a subset of our current and future graphics products, some of which were recently posted online but have since been taken down. While we're aware the perpetrator has additional files that have not been made public, we believe the stolen graphics IP is not core to the competitiveness or security of our graphics products. We are not aware of the perpetrator possessing any other AMD IP. We are working closely with law enforcement, officials and other experts as part of an ongoing criminal investigation. Now some of you are undoubtedly wondering what was actually leaked. Not in terms of like the details, because obviously I'm not going to discuss that, but what did it actually cover, the leak? Well, according to a report by Torrent Freak, the code contained things that pointed to Navi 10, Navi 21, and Arden, which is a potential internal code name for the Xbox Series X's GPU. Now, AMD unsurprisingly used the DMCA takedown to get rid of the information, which is obviously what that law is for. And Torrent Freak also said that the person was trying to sell the information and valued it at around $100 million. And they said, quote, if I get no buyer, I will just leak everything. So, I have to wait and see what comes out, if anything, regarding this. I will link both the AMD and Torrent Freak reports regarding this if you want to look more into it. But I'm going to move over to our next topic, which is regarding the Xbox Series X. So you have undoubtedly seen the reports from analysts basically stating that they believe that the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, in fairness, will be delayed due to the <clears throat> issues that are going around. Now, I said at the time when I covered this that Microsoft were stating at the time that this was not the case, they're still looking to release the console in holiday of this year, and now they have issued a fresh statement to CNBC, and this was from Microsoft boss Satya Nadella, and he said, quote, on the supply side, we are getting back on the rails. Now, he's not promising that it's coming out this year, that's very important to keep in mind, but he seems confident that it will come out on time. So, obviously they would say this, but... They've always said this. This is nothing new. This is not a new position from them. And other analysts did disagree with that other report, basically saying that they don't agree that it would actually have an impact um, on them long term. Obviously, it's going to have issues. You know, workers might be off, that sort of stuff. But there are undoubtedly measures in place and they are looking like they're on track. For all we know, they've added in extra time for unexpected delays. And that's why it's coming out holiday this year rather than, I don't know, the summer. I'm being a bit facetious because, you know, consoles usually come out around Christmas time for obvious reasons, but you just don't know. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a console developer. I'm a YouTuber. Obviously. <laughs> so, yeah. That's what they're saying at the moment, but things could very well change. We'll have to see. So, we're going to move over to our last topic of this video, and it is regarding Samsung and DDR5 memory. So, this is an announcement straight from the mouth of Samsung themselves. They have announced today that they have successfully shipped 1 million of the first 10nm class D1X DDR4 DRAM modules based on EUV technology. However, the part we're more interested in is where they say that they, quote, expect to begin volume production of D1A-based DDR5 and LP DDR5 next year, which would double manufacturing productivity of the 12-inch D1X wafers. So, let me put a bit of a TLDR on that for you. DDR5 RAM will be made using EUV in 2020. And Samsung is even saying that it should be here in 2021 as well, with the mass production going to 2020, 2021, excuse me, TBD in a timeline table. So basically, they're expecting to begin mass production of this uh, next year, but they haven't said a date or anything like that. 
Now the reason this is so exciting is because, well, there's also something very big and very important happening in 2021. And it is none other than Zen 4, which is utilising, of course, TSMC's 5NM process node. And, according to what we know, it could release as early as 2021. Now, we do not know this for sure. AMD are deliberately vague on their roadmaps, because obviously they want to be able to change that if anything happens, if anything goes wrong, that sort of stuff, which is fair enough. You don't want to say an exact date and then look a fool when you have to delay it. So potentially, this could mean that we could see Ryzen 5000 running alongside EUV DDR5 RAM, and obviously Ryzen itself would be EUV made. The possibilities are definitely intriguing on that one, but obviously this is a lot of speculation based on what Samsung have said. If you want to read their full statement, you can find it linked in the description below this video. However, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe. It does help out a great deal. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.